anyone to get off their darkest ground But gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too Welcome back to episode 4 of Getting Started in Space Engineers 2021 series. Uh, last time uh, we set up an underground facility fully pressurized and capable of producing a ton of iron. Uh, this drill uh, since then has pretty much exhausted the iron deposit uh, but our refineries are still processing the ore into ingots. Uh, so I thought the next stage would be to build a mobile base, uh, a rover, a large grid rover that allows us, that would allow us to drill further bunkers and extract other resources like gold, silver, uh, magnesium, and, and uh, therefore make tons of bullets. We could also sell the ore, the gold at a space station. Uh, uh, in order, uh, in exchange for space units or uh, start credits. Uh, so yeah, so that that should be good. So that that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, let me show you what I have set up first. I'm gonna have to put on my helmet. Okay, it's on. Let's switch back to first person. We can open. I don't care about oxygen because I can always set this to depressurize and have it absorb all the oxygen and refill the tank so there it's filling up the oxygen tanks I can leave this open even uh, so as you can see pretty much all the iron is extracted I'm gonna leave the rotor on because the drills uh, I've installed four pistons since then and they have still plenty of distance to travel uh, let me just make sure okay we're gonna disable creative here yeah and we're good yeah I was doing a little prep work before just checking things uh, but yeah everything should be good now up here at the surface I've installed a second tower because I noticed that the power supply was pretty low uh, and I haven't installed a hydrogen engine yet, but there's really not a purpose uh, or, or a point in installing a hydrogen engine down there because we've already exhausted the mine, meaning there's no more for us to do here. So therefore, what I've done is I've brought up uh, using conveyor ports, I've just raised a storage container all the way to the surface so that I can access the components from here and also add to the production queue as well. So I've extracted a few uh, interior plates and steel plates ahead of time. And uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to build. We're about to use a projector, but before I use a projector, 
I want to be able to build the rover already connected to the grid that has the wind turbines, has battery power, and has a ton of ingots of capacity. So that when I'm done with the rover, I can transfer all that cargo down there uh, into the rover directly. So that I can bring all those resources with me to wherever I build the next outpost. Okay, so I what I want to do is I want to have connectors already lined up and connected to each other uh, before I even make work on the base. So let's do that. Uh, let's add one connector facing upwards connected on the top of the storage container and then I'm gonna switch to the light armor blocks because I'm gonna raise armor blocks until I go one block past the connector right there then I'm gonna switch back to the connector and now I can place one connector facing downwards and this way you start your design or your build directly connected to each other one grid to the, the station connected to the, the grid and once you're done you just disconnect them next i'm gonna put a conveyor port right on top of the connector now next let's weld these up and uh, we should be good so i'll just cut until they're welded up all right but after welding the connector blocks they now have a yellow indicator line in the, the tip of the, each connector. We want those to turn green. So we want to access the control panel, look for the connectors, and then hit lock. Once they're locked, they should turn green. Okay, and now we can safely remove these armor blocks. Notice that they stay green. Okay, and now we have one temporary grid connected to our station capable of transporting uh, resources. So next, what we need to do is install one projector and I'm gonna install the projector away from there, away from where I want the base, so just so it's not in the way. Uh, the important thing about the projector is not where it's placed, it's in which direction. Notice that this side has four tips kind of like in a cross shape in the center of the circle this one has none and this one has two so the one that is has two has to be at the top and the one that is four is the front is the face okay so that's how you're gonna tell and therefore uh, what we do is we're going to place or no notice the four one is at the top in the icon so I'm gonna put it and then the two one is the face the front okay so I'm gonna place it like that oh, uh, so that now I just have to weld this and then configure it so that it lines up with our connector configuration over there so let me weld up the projector and we'll be right back the planner is clear okay I should be quick should be quick let's not even cut Okay, I can drop all these. Can I withdraw motors? Let's produce them. There it is, produced. Let's do it. Nice, done. Yeah, build planner is, is awesome. Okay, now uh, in the control panel, we can look for the projector and then we're gonna load one blueprint and it's called the Tech TEK mobile base and uh, I haven't published it because the profile icon is it's, it's not good but in this video I'll generate a brand new one uh, and then we will publish it with that one so multiple grids are not supported if you build a, a grid that has pistons and rotors and you attach different grids they will not be accounted for in the projector uh, they can still be a part of the blueprint, but the projector will only project the largest grid, which is fine uh, because I, I designed it with that in mind. And then let's look at how it was configured. Looks like no, looks like I used the wrong part. So 
Yes, it looks like the square block, the four parts, this is the front, the one with four tips, and then the one with two is the top. Notice here in the projector. But it's no problem because I can always rearrange that. It's just a little bit tedious to do so. So you just know now the configuration. But uh, in the projector, we can rotate. It's going to be yaw. Let's see what that did. Yep, that is good. And now we need to rotate it. So projection. Let's see if it's roll. 180. Yep, it's exactly roll. And now the front is facing the direction we wanted initially. Now we just have to raise it. All right, so control panel projector vertical offset let's raise it and then let's move it forward uh, I'm moving it backwards I mean let's see where it is right there okay it's good but it's a bit far away although it has plenty of clearance with the wheels so I may want to keep it there so now what I have to do is connect there where the piston is there's gonna be a conveyor block there I need to connect it with this connector block here temporarily so that I can configure them I could probably rearrange this better so that I can save block space so let's control panel the projector let's lower it Okay, there is enough. Forward a little bit. And then that's it. That's as, as close as I, I, I think I'm willing to get it. Now we, we need to roll it back so that it doesn't break when we release it. By impacting the bottom of the station. So let's roll it a little bit further backwards and then we're going to be good. Projector forward. Yeah, that's fine. Let's leave it there. Okay, so now I'll be back once I have a conveyor line connected to both parts. Okay. Okay, guys, we're back. We have successfully connected the conveyor boards to the projection. Uh, so we can start building off that end. And when we're done, we are be, we'll be able to transfer all the resources at the bottom of the bunker into the cargo of the uh, rover. So uh, all there is left to do is to start welding the rover and what I like to do is I like to start welding the interior components before I uh, weld the armor so I will start uh, although I like to start uh, with with uh, the base uh, the bottom of it and then I can clearly see the projection I, I will use a uh, feature called show only buildable blocks uh, and then we will be able to only see the interior components that we need to build so let's go to our projector and then say show only buildable and now we're gonna carry exclusively hydrogen uh, tanks uh, let's see where's the hydrogen tank let's uh, yeah let's refill exclusively steel plates I gotta turn off creative yeah I figured out that um, the projector needs to be attached to the connector side of whatever you're building otherwise the projection does not help you build um, it wouldn't show these blocks as buildable because it, it thought they were two separate grids if that makes sense but yeah all there is to do is to start welding um
Another thing you can do is we can build we can build a cockpit. And then let's use Uh, we can use we can use this cockpit it doesn't matter which direction all we need is to be able to recharge unable to place cockpit because it's in the wrong direction okay let's get some interior plates and then we can place the cockpit right there and then build planner is clear, add both. Well, we can start welding. And then withdraw. I think we need to deposit and then withdraw again. Add to production. Yeah, we're only going to be missing a few motors. Yeah, because with this cockpit, we don't have to go all the way down to the bunker in order to recharge our energy. So it's going to be pretty convenient to for us to stay in the surface. It is slow, though. It is better to establish a medical room but we only need it uh, every so often so it's not gonna be an issue next a uh, yeah uh, plates okay so now we can just have the projection Weld everything for us here. And I'm using, um, notice that I'm using what are these glass door edges as the axle because they have um, different reach. I don't know how to explain it, let me see. For example, they're not a perfect cube like a conveyor board or a cargo container. They Notice how like a cockpit is also not a perfect cube. It has an area that is open space that will not register an impact if an object would like grace it. So the surface it would not register an impact if it, it touches the blast door edge because this is kind of like an invisible edge so it's pretty convenient so that you still have like structural support but you still have clearance this is also useful when building elevators and you don't want the the edges of the elevator to uh, hit the edges of the wall you put you make the walls be blast door edges and they will not um, um, clang what they call clang but yeah in survival it just takes a little bit of flying around especially when you just have a blueprint loaded you can you can raise a building very quickly and then you can use the we'll, we'll do a separate a uh, series just to or or separate videos separate guides on how to design so I'm not gonna spend time designing I'm just gonna build a design that I already have and make available for you guys so that you can subscribe to it and also uh, load it in your uh, play because the, these blueprints are going to be designed for both like PvP and, and PvE so you'll be able to start off 
in either environment well. Then you can always start with these and build up. I'm gonna queue the make sure my build planner is clear. It's not. Let's add the wheels and the tires to the build planner. But yeah, with the build planner it's pretty pretty convenient and a blueprint. And I'm this is showing you how to combine the two, how to use projection and build planner. Uh, let's, let's just weld what we have. I don't want to make more components than what I need. Okay, let's see. Let's drop so that we can carry more. And then add to production. We still have a lot of inventory space, so let's just wait for it. Okay, that's good. these and the blueprints are already gonna come configured because you also have to configure the strength of the wheels suspension steering angle brake strength all that kind of stuff pretty cool to to play around with but I think beyond the scope for uh, getting started so at least these will be fully functional and then you can also look at the settings and and figure out exactly what's going on and tweak it however you see fit okay we have two of the axles uh, let's get more steel plates now A build planner is clear. Then I'm gonna keep welding here, please. I'm gonna queue up this conveyor block and the piston yeah that way I don't leave anything so I'm gonna be welding the bottom foundation and then the interior components on top of that foundation. Having an upgraded welder really helps out because it'll save you hydrogen and energy from because you're build welding really quickly. Uh, so you don't have to spend so much hydrogen flying or spend energy welding uh, hydrogen and you'll see it's gonna get annoying having to refill your tank so you want to be as efficient as possible testing testing we're good okay yeah if you're having trouble welding a block just get a, a bit farther away from it it's probably because your inside your character is flying too close to the object and it's actually inside the hitbox 
You see like this, like this one. Happens on small corners, very small blocks. Energy low. But yeah, this this is pretty convenient. Because I also don't have to be switching around the blocks and the shapes and everything. I design them in creative and then I weld them using projection yeah, in, in survival. So I've queued a bunch of things in the in the build planner. Uh, I'm going to start with drawing them. Looks like we can add to production. And then we still have a little bit of energy. Then over here. Okay, let's get more. We have our ore detector. We just need small steel tubes. I mean large steel tubes. We need a bit more. Okay, that should be good. Next, we have our conveyor block over here that I want to weld before I forget since it's what connects the two stations together okay energy is critical let's clear the build planner and now we have access to this conveyor here and this one here so let's queue those two up drop all this add and then add to production and then I'm just gonna climb here we can even access production from the cockpit. Yeah, it's done. Energy is, is okay. Let's go. Yeah, you cannot help it if a meteor storm hits your build at this stage it it's just what ha what it is you just repair and keep going but hopefully we'll avoid the meteor that's why you want to use projection and be quick about the thing yep looks like we dodged this one I don't want to build too many of the armor plates. Because they'll block access to other components that I need to weld. steel plates
we should add more to production it's like a bunch more Looks like I'm missing a block there. This is why before I publish, I like to build them out. Because you always, once you're building them manually, you always notice things that you didn't when you designed them in the first place in creative. building the general frame and once we have a, a, a frame established I'll be back uh, and show you then okay all right guys we're back this is how it looks so far I pretty much welded the frame around uh, the rover just the steel plates uh, the armor plating the interior is completely hull so now that I have a good floor foundation, uh, I will be able to start welding the, the interiors. So I'm pretty much going to start from this conveyor port and then work my way up uh, the cargo. And then notice that we also have equipped two refineries. We can only see the modules. But since we're done with the iron mine down here, instead of processing the components to build those uh, yield modules we're gonna remove them we're gonna grind them away from the refinery back down in our bunker uh, I couldn't get to it uh, but yeah let's let's start doing that let's start by okay grabbing these two containers so notice that you can add projections to your build planner. Okay, add the rest to the production queue. And then over here. It's gonna take a few plates for those cargo containers to be built <clears throat> so I'll just be back once we're done with those all right we finished welding the storage containers now I'm gonna move towards the looks like we can connect the refineries there's a bunch of batteries as well it's just whatever makes sense that doesn't block things So I guess I, what makes sense to me is the medical room because we can already benefit from that to recharge faster and the O2 generators that are right here and then the refineries yeah at this point our storage container here should be connected so we can extract start extracting materials directly from the start container which is going to make it very convenient to keep building really quickly so yeah we'll just, we just gotta keep welding this almost done add the rest to production queue All right. Medical room's almost done. All 
I think now it's way quicker. It's just, I, I wanted to cut because it was so annoying to just fly back and forth with the steel plates and stuff. But I think now we can just keep. Although I may have to cut with the batteries again because the batteries are very tedious. You can only carry 24, 20 power cells at a time. And it's going to take a lot of batteries to power this rover. Uh, I don't know how many, but we'll see. Okay, medical room is complete. Okay, looks like the generator is complete too. Oh, we started building an engine. Okay, let's complete the engine. Engines will turn hydrogen into electricity, but they consume a ton of the hydrogen. So be careful not to run out, uh, especially if you don't need the power. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, we'll have to add to production queue. Yep. And there we have one engine. Let's finish the rest of the engines. So we have one. Uh, and three more to go. So three more engines to go. Okay, the rest should be able to be created if we add to build planner. Yep, there he goes. Let's just keep welding. Second engine online. Third one is alive. And so is fourth. Awesome. Okay. Our middle uh, area is, is complete. I think we can start working on, on these. Speed modules. These are pretty common components, so I don't mind queuing them up and having them in stock. But the superconductors are rare, so I don't, and they use gold, so I don't want to queue them extra. It's the yield upgrades that I want to grind away. Speed modules are fine, speed modules are inexpensive. Okay, now let's add them. the production queue make sure nope we have a ton okay let's see okay there we go and now we can withdraw nothing to withdraw so let's add the rest to production there it goes look at that super quick we're just waiting on the materials
Okay. Let's keep welding our upgrades. Now, we're ready for our refiner. Let's also get this staircase. Yeah, since the, the area is getting a little bit tighter. Okay, let's keep welding the refinery. to production queue we ran out of steel plates okay just the metal grids now And that's a functional refinery. So now we can complete the connection. Energy low. Adding to production queue. Yeah, because once I seal them, I won't be able to access the inventory. So I'd rather wait until they're done and then get them once. Awesome. We have a refinery working. I think it's even producing already. Yep. So, therefore, I think it's proper that we connect the other side as well. Let's get from build planner and add to production queue. There they go. Let's do the same thing. Let's wait again. All right. We're going to keep this port open so that we can keep welding. Last thing I want to do is the batteries. Let's do the ejectors. There's nothing there. Now let's do the shelves. They're right here. Add to production queue. Oh wow, these shelves are very expensive. Well, I guess it's a place to store the materials. the rest here uh. 
Where are these components for? All right, build planner is messed up. Let's forget about those shows. Next, uh, let's worry about the conveyor. And this order. at the connector no energy okay that should be the connector oh no energy Okay, there's our ejector. It's already throwing out gravel. I don't know where that clang is coming from. I guess we can start the tanks. Welding. Need to add the rest to production queue. Oh, that's gonna take a bit. Okay, so what would we have left? The oxygen tank, generators, and then the assemblers. We're almost done with the interior components bit of decoration bits here and there and then the cockpit have one tank done and there's the second Next, I'm gonna get the hydrogen tank and the oxygen tank. I mean, the generator and the oxygen tank. Had have to add everything to production queue. Afterwards, we'll finish the assemblers. Oh, because this is not connected. That's why. Let's get more before we weld the oxygen tank. And then this should be connected now. That should be our tank. 
Nope, we need more tubes. Good stuff. We have a vent. A vent and... Where's that sorter? Sorter. And then another sorter. Okay, let's see if the production queue is done. Okay. I'm gonna finish the assemblers, but notice that there is a uh, sorting out of the assemblers and there's a sorting in uh, and that's so that ingots can flow in one direction um, and uh, the components are extracted out to prevent the clogging so we'll, we can go over that in a different video uh, so let's add the remote control block Then the assembler itself. And let's add a second assembler. Then let's access components from through here. Okay, remote control. Almost done here. Just need to add a few motors to the production queue. Okay, we have them, the build planner is synced again, and now we get to finish the, uh, uh, the assembler, the remote control, and let's start the other assembler. Okay, there's our two assemblers completed. And now, we'll need eight speed modules. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I'm gonna cut and then be back when we place those.
Okay guys, we're back. We have finished welding the upgrades. Now we're going to connect together here by finishing these curved uh, conveyor ports. All right, that should be all for those corners. Alright, let's see if we have enough for those tubes. Looks like we do. Or not. Missing motors. Okay, so they're going. Awesome. Now, now we have an extra production line on top. Next, our rover is also equipped with a gyroscope so that if we get some air, we can always tilt the rover to align it with the ground for a softer-ish landing. <laughs> you know, uh, so let's start welding this one. It's gonna take a, a bit of st uh, steel plates. So I'll just be back once we have this one welded, I guess. Or maybe not. Let's see. 319 plates. No, it's got... It's, well... No matter. Almost done. Yeah, gyroscope are expensive, but... They also have a uh, high health. Just gonna need one more motor and a bunch of steel grid. There it goes. Perfect, we have a gyroscope. Next, what do we need? Those conveyor ports are for... Ah, uh, over here. Let's get this conveyor. And this one. Add to production. Ah, uh, we're missing the other refinery. So yeah. I'll just keep welding and we'll be back. I'll show you once we have more things. Uh, although, let me show you probably here. I don't remember what do we have here. So I guess let me show you this and then we'll cut when I have to build the refinery. Production, just a bunch, bunch of tubes. What is, oh, we have the cryobots. That's what I wanted to show you. That's what I didn't remember. So yeah, these conveyor ports have two cryobots hidden away over here, so that you can leave your survivors um, when you log out, and even an ally can use the rover while you're offline. Just leave your, make sure that your ally is in the cryopod and then you can safely move the rover around and it shouldn't affect your, your, your friends. Let's add that one, that conveyor and this one. Build planner. Notice we haven't had trouble with resources. That iron mine, one iron mine, even in bird time where resources are scarce and small deposits um, 
we were able to get enough to build a fully functioning ro rover. That looks good. I'm gonna leave those ports open. Let's weld the refinery. I'll be back once we have the refinery. Remember, I'm gonna be grinding away the yield modules in the bottom uh, and then bringing them up so I can weld them. Uh, but I'll just weld them and, and show you once it's all welded, okay? All right, guys. Uh, as I was making my way out of the bunker, uh, I got attacked by spiderlings. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, be always ready with the weapon and ammo. But yeah, we have already welded the refinery with the yield modules. Here they are. And now what we need to do is connect this tank to this storage container and the refinery at the back. So let's do that. Let's add make sure our build planner is clear it is let's add all these and then grab them out of the queue okay production keeps going odd because it's done but I don't think yeah it's odd there we go it was one there was one build planner is clear there is one storage container there at the rest of production queue okay that that looks better next what do we have over here oh we have another ejector Let's wait until this is done. And then we can weld this one. And over here we can add the sorter. After the sorter we'll be able to add the other connector. Production queue. What do you have here? Batteries. Yeah, I'll leave the batteries for the for the end. It's the last and the most boring part. Okay, that's done. Fill planner is clear. Let's add that connector. Q. Eventually we'll have an inventory of thousands of all these uh, common components. But now that we only have the iron mine, I want to save as much as the resources as possible. I don't want to have to start another mine to finish this build because I made more components that I needed in something else for example so yeah um, let's add these stairs
production is need more components. Alright, nice. Good stuff. We have sensors, jukebox, table, vending machines. All those are secondary, so let's let's keep going. Armory. Okay, let's start welding all these. Interior walls and and floors. Yep. All these floors until the cockpit. Uh, this is gonna be the foundation for. Ah, don't fall and die. For the cockpit area. So we'll be back then once we have that welded. Okay, guys, having placed the uh, floors, floor panels, we can now add to the production queue the cockpit, the control control seat and these doors there is what is this a conveyor port on the top of the door and then the vent let's see how much we get with that okay let's start in order Rest has to be put into production. Energy low. Now let's see. Okay, that's a functional control seat. I think we're still missing some components for it. So let's make sure to weld it to 100. And let's get the doors. Okay, more doors. We should now be able to build the conveyor port. Awesome, moving really fast now. Okay, get that conveyor port as well. And let's get this storage container. Let's wait for production to be done. Okay, looks like it's finished. something else what do we need okay there it is next on either side we have contracts and the store now that they're added we can drop all this Grab components. Add 
adding to the production queue. Alright, awesome. We have a functional store and contracts which we can assign factions to and be able to trade with them. Uh, let's see, do we have the vent? I think those were the materials that I put away. Add to production queue. Okay, there is the rest. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, next let's add the sensors. One, two, and three. One for each door. Add to the production queue. Let's wait for it. Takes very little resources. So might as well wait for them. Almost done. And these will be fully functional. As soon as you weld them up, they'll be already programmed for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, they detect me and they open and close behind me. Alright, what next? Okay, there's some lights over here. I know lights just need comp construction components, so I'm just gonna grab them myself. Okay, there they are. Uh, I want to keep going since I already have components, construction components. Let's try to finish as many lights as we have we we can. see a light projection awesome okay we have lights Okay, we have a sensor here. Sensor and a door. There's the door in the build planner. Let's also add these. Dispenser and vending machine. Why not? Right? Okay. Grab everything, add the rest. Okay, that should be everything. This one will also be fully programmed as well. Next, let's get the couch. 
the LCD. You need an LCD. You need a place to chill, lay back after a long day of engineering. Add to the production queue. Let's start welding while that finishes. Okay, running back. Okay, these are toilets. A passage, a door, and then there's timer blocks there, timer block there, we have room in a build planner, passage, and then button panel, and button panel. Add to production queue. This is going to take a little bit, so we'll be right back. Okay, the build planner is done. Let's withdraw components. And over here, we can start building. Go get more components. Can I withdraw? Okay, that's fine. Because we're full. Okay, there's our functioning toilet. Our passage that takes us there. Our shower. Our door. here we have timer block and then another timer block we should get the passage now looks like we're out of resources let's go back and get more Energy low. looks like we have everything and now we can finish welding this passage here and the button panels couldn't add them to production queue so they weren't now they are now let's also add the ATM to the build planner we can add this door here and then two passages Okay, there's one passage. There they are, both passages. And then the kitchen. And then the sci-fi bar counter. All right, let's start gathering those. The button panels will also be configured. I don't know why my build plan is all messed up. production queue probably a stat it was missing the components all right so we'll have to wait again 
and this time again it's gonna be quite a bit time until it's done with all that so we'll be back all right production is done let's withdraw I'm gonna deposit all that I think our ATM It wasn't done. Bun panel. Our door. And doors are pretty heavy in terms of PCU, which is performance cost unit. So mean meaning they they're very expensive in terms of performance cost. Uh, so. Um, just keep that in mind uh, if you want you can if you're in a public server you can do away with the doors and get rid of a lot of PCU oh well this is not it's missing the interior plates Alright, now there's our kitchen. Sci fi stool still needs more plate. No, we got the plates. Oh, we ran out of energy. Okay, so let's go to the medical bay. Okay, I'm trying to get the right blocks, this corner, and then desk, that should be good, let's get the jukebox, and the ratings. Production. I'm gonna start welding. Looks good. So yeah, notice how I designed the bar so that people can sit around and the chef serves or you have a dedicated bar tender, whatever. Okay. Unknown technology, I need to research it first. Okay. Let's get one of these. And then I tap four. These ones are hard to 
There we go. One, two, and Okay, railings are done. We cannot finish the jukebox because I gotta re I gotta build something. I don't know what, but it doesn't matter. Let's keep going. What do we need? Okay, this planter. Okay, that's all. Now it's missing some things. Okay, uh, let's look for the tank. Read fuel. What do we have over here? Batteries. Let's add the cryopods. Add to production queue. And let's finish the planter so I can get rid of these components. Almost done with the cryopods. together now looks like all we need to do is seal it now oh, we have a locker there a box and another locker add to production queue shouldn't take long It's done. Withdraw. All right, we have lockers. Yeah, looks like all that's left is to seal off the... Oh, wait. We have... Spotlights. Camera. I guess I, I forgot I finished that spotlight. And did I finish these stairs? Yes, I finished the ladders. Get the railing. Pretty much all the railing I could make. Because I know there's railing on the other side, so I, I just queued them. Okay, production goes. 
It's going quick. Almost done. Okay, looks like we got it all. Let me add these LCD, transparent LCDs. And let's keep welding the railings. Okay. Let's drop this and withdraw and add to production. That's going to be exactly what we need for the LCDs. After that, it's just with the windows. There's tail lights also, so I'm going to bring some construction components with me extra. And then I'm going to withdraw. Let's go back over here. There's one. There's the other. And the final one. Um, next. Tail lights. Okay, I guess I used up all the construction component. So let's get some manually. Oh well, there's none. Okay. Clear the production queue. Let's go outside. One, two, and then one and two cameras. I forgot to weld the camera. Let's withdraw. Add to production queue. Withdraw. Nice. And then over here as well. We have tail lights and the final camera. Nice. Look at that. It's coming together. Okay. So, uh, the glass is going to be pretty easy. It's just griddle and, well, glass. So, I'm going to get girder. Here the build planner. One. Okay, build capacity reached. It's gonna go.
Nice, a storm is just brewing, so we're, we're gonna pretty much seal the cockpit. Be able to survive. I'm just gonna queue them manually. Thousand and a thousand girder. Okay. Let me switch. Now start producing girder. Almost done. Almost done. I feel like I'm suffocating here. No, we're good. We can survive this for a long time, but I don't know. I wanted to seal off. Ah, eight more bulletproof glass. <laughs> Get the rest of the girder. Why not? Nice. Why is it not pressurized? Ah, we're missing this one. And this one. Nice. We've pressurized. <laughs> Look at the windmills. <laughs> the, the wind turbines. Ah, we should build a battery so that we charge during the storm. Okay, so I'm gonna rush and do that. Uh, okay, batteries, batteries, batteries. Yeah, yeah. Although it's no problem, the surplus is probably being captured by the other batteries. And we can always transfer power up here. I'm just gonna queue them manually. Here they are. I'm just gonna queue them all. Drop all this, withdraw. Then add to production. Okay, I'm gonna drop because I need to recharge the power suit. That's good. Let's keep building the batteries. It was important for us not to throw away the stone that we were collecting so that we had enough nickel in order to build batteries. Otherwise, right now we would be probably be low on batteries. Like if we had put an ejector for stone down at the iron mine, which is something that we might do later. But once we have plenty of nickel supply, for example, otherwise we rather process uh, the stone. This, this refinery, I mean, this rover will have a speed refinery so that it can refine uh, nickel 
from the stone but it's also gonna be equipped with ejectors so that it doesn't clog up either ah. okay let's get a bunch of steel plates and then what I'm going to do is at the frames so if the build planner decides to give me material for a different battery I already have a frame that I can attach it to Let's drop all this and withdraw. This is why I meant this is the bo most boring part because it's it's just moving things from here to there. So I, I guess I'll be back once they're all welded up. Uh, okay. All right, guys. The batteries are welded, but the storm has passed. So. It doesn't matter though, uh, they're recharging and eventually we'll transfer power. Actually not, I regret that. We're not gonna transfer power because we wanna leave the iron mine deposit as a base that we can spawn in. Um, so let's finish welding and I think all, all that's left is the outer shell. Uh, we have a few, we have a conveyor port there, a conveyor port over here. then one over here probably another yep okay that's it for conveyor ports coming up oh no 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 okay it was trying to add the batteries Look at that, and I added a, a ton of things that we didn't need. Okay. Okay, three conveyor ports, and then this one that's incomplete. Let's try to finish the incomplete one. Before I seal this off, let's withdraw and add to production. Though that should be the conveyor port, things we need for the conveyor ports. Alright, that one is complete. Let's see if we can withdraw everything. Nope. Not yet, but no problem. That's the second one. There's two more. Let's withdraw. Third conveyor. And then the final one. And these conveyor ports are here to connect the turrets that are gonna be on top. So let's weld those up now. Okay. Uh, one, two, yeah, we got that one, and then the fourth. Okay, next. Uh, now the only board accessible is going to be this one here. Add to production queue, and then in the meantime, let's look for the hydrogen tank, and then refuel. And then look at production. This one's gonna take a bit. Yeah, it's gonna take a bit. So we'll be back when this one is done. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I'll start welding the outside. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're ready to start welding these turrets. I 
have two frames. Okay, let's go get more. Ouch! Yeah, be careful flying around these. Withdraw. Energy is low. Okay, that one is complete. Need steel energy plate. Critical. Okay, energy is about to fail. Then here, let's see if we have more. No, that's it. We're just missing plates, steel plates, okay? So let's get those plates. And then first place the frame by just tapping it. Should place one. There it goes. Place one steel plate only. That way I have enough steel plate for the other one. This will not be functional yet since I don't have ammunition. Uh, but with magnesium, we'll get it. So that's gonna be our first task. Get just a handful of magnesium to fuel the, to, to build um, turrets. And then we're gonna, oh look, there's a light. Yeah, that makes sense, it's very dark down there. Okay, three construction components. Then let's get steel plates. Steel plates. I don't know what else we're missing for the turrets, but we'll find out. It's, that's better. I already put a glass here. I think it was just that it was missing a few steel plates. What about this one? All right, awesome. We got turrets. Let's. I'm gonna finish uh, welding the ceiling, and then. Let's see how much do we have enough plates? Yeah, we should have plenty. No, I'm gonna start putting more plates. And then let's weld. Okay, more steel plates. Looks like another storm is brewing. But that just means more power for our batteries. Okay, we gotta go back.
Nice, it's looking good. Almost done. Oh, over here we have the antenna. More plates. I don't want to miss this block. Almost done, almost done. Nice, nice. And then the windows. Okay. Remember, once you weld your antenna, you have to turn it off so that it doesn't uh, reveal your location to players until you're ready. And then you can control that. Always control your antenna, whether it's on or off, as you need it. Okay, so let's just get everything we need for the antenna. Gonna need things from production. Unknown technology. Gotta research. I'll figure out what I'm missing. But yeah, with the antenna, okay, all that's left is the windows. So I'm just gonna queue a ton of windows. Actually, let me just get all the girder I have, deposit everything, and then just weld. That one is done. Okay, and then afterwards, I'll do a run for the bulletproof class. Where are you? Oh. Sometimes you need to weld one before you can start welding the other, because it's its attachment. Notice that even I, though I have the refinery there, I'm using a window because the refinery is not a perfect uh, block and it will let um, air escape. So we want to make sure it, that it's uh, airtight. That way, um, I, I, that's why I also use those windows there. Next bulletproof glass. I think there was more here. We probably need more. Uh -huh, let me see if I see any more. There's here. Okay. 
This should be enough to start. It is a full inventory of bulletproof glass, so let's go ahead. I cannot access through this port because of the sorters are one way. So I still have to go around. What? What? Oh, it gave me things for the antenna. Okay. There we go. Bulletproof glass. It's producing faster than I can grab it. No need to cut. Need more bulletproof glass. I'm also gonna I'm gonna get the interior plate first. Well I can I think I can grab more bulletproof glass too. Because then that way I can finish these plates. Oh I'll need I'll add these to the production queue. This one. Hydrogen tank. Let's refuel. Step full of class. Here it is. That one is sealed. Need more glass. Oh, careful. Oh, we can access here. Let's get more. I'm going to add even more to production. Okay, I'm gonna stop production. I think that's enough. I wanna make sure they're welded to 100%. This is gonna be protection from our interior components. So, we wanna make sure they, they, they do their job protecting. Okay. Let's drop, no. We will still need more because there's one window over here that we couldn't weld earlier. There it is. So now with the griddle, we can finish it. And my griddle, I mean, what? Okay, bulletproof glass. Awesome, completed. Next, that should seal off everything. But all we're missing is this. And then... Four of them. Withdraw. Produce. Finished. And then we're done. Awesome. I think this is the final step. This is the last thing. What? 
You're missing to your plate. Da -da -da -da. Well, it's missing the antenna. Oh, it's missing a wheel. Okay, so if it if it miss, misses a wheel when you place it, it's probably because your engineer was in the way. What you can do is you can add, go to your control panel, look for that wheel. Notice that everything is already grouped because of the blueprint. Everything already will, will be grouped. Rover wheels, rover wheels wheels here they are show them there they are so it's gonna be left middle and now add a wheel and it should add a frame so all we need to do is add it to production queue I'm gonna do that so that I can just access the inventory from here Probably I'll leave these. I'll leave these. I don't know. Okay. Energy critical. Ah, it's bad. That's a bad sign. Add to production queue. Withdraw. Awesome. Okay, we have all wheels. We have sensors, we have lights. We don't know the jukebox yet. Let's recharge. It's just probably because we need to unlock the beacon first. So let's try to do that. Let's look at the antenna. Here's the antenna. No, yep. We can place the beacon. So let's add a beacon to our build planner. Let's drop everything, withdraw. I'm just gonna place it anywhere that it lets me. Welded. Okay, now let's add to production queue whatever we're missing. Yeah, and with that, we'll be able to unlock the um, the antenna and that's what we need to finish the rover so i'll, I'll be back once we uh, well it's done yeah uh, we don't have to one two three done it's heavy components okay two more Awesome, there it is. Beacon has unlocked new things. Let's go above. And now we can weld this one. We can remove the beacon from build planner, add this one. gonna drop them here because I don't know what it really needs okay let's drop this and then start with drawing for the actual antenna Ow. 
All right, a few more large steel tubes and the radio components. So it's gonna be a few trips since they're all heavy. Okay, almost done with the tubes. Probably we need to add, yeah, definitely. We need to add to production, so let's leave it there. Okay, it's heavy. I mean, it's inventory is full. So let's keep welding. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, right here. One more radio component. Nice. We have an antenna. And this is going to be important because our uh, rover is going to be able to control drones. We're going to be able to control drones from the inside of the uh, rover. So we'll need an antenna to communicate with them. Also, if we want to remote control the rover from our base, uh, we'll need to have an antenna that's within the range of our base. Uh, so, yep, pretty cool. It's done. Now, the last part before everything is done is to disconnect it and have it fall to the ground. Okay? So let's do that, and this is a tricky part, but it can be done. I'm gonna uh, disconnect it here so that it falls and nothing hits the ground. If anything hits the ground, it's gonna be these conveyor ports, okay? So let's see, let's see what happens. <gasps> Before I do that, I forgot. Don't do that. Oh my god, I almost forgot. Thank you. Uh, I so glad I remembered um there was no going back after that okay you can okay you can move components from one inventory to another uh, without having to pass through your own character's limited inventory space okay before I show you how to do that let me re just recharge my hydrogen before I forget okay now what you need to do is on the left side of the UI, you're going to click show connected inventories and then you're going to go and find the one that you want to empty out. OK, so, for example, I want to empty out cargo main, which is down in. Oh, oh, wow. It has 878 power cells. OK, yeah. We're going to. Um, we're going to move this inventory. Uh, into our um, rover. I'm gonna look for the rover's cargo. Rover cargo one, rover cargo two. Okay, here they are. So all you have to do is just move them directly. Look how little volume these components there are a lot of ingots and a lot of components there and they they occupy very little but they do occupy a ton of mass like i mean a ton of it so you want to be careful because this is a good moment to explain it cargo cabin Rover cargo two, hide empty. Cargo cryo. Cargo the dr in the drill. We're moving everything, everything. We're done with this base. This is just a if 
everything else is destroyed, then we have this place. Because we've already exhausted all the iron. And there are better places to settle permanently. This is another reason why I don't want to make extra resources. Because then I have to carry them in volume and space. Nice. So, you see, we have... Actually, I can move this into the rover tank H2. I, I name them so I know which tank it is. Is it the tank down at the drill? Is it the tank uh, at the rover? No, I name them rover tank H O2, rover tank H2. Now, now we're absolutely ready. Notice that the only inventory that has uh, uh, items is the rover cargo. And that puts, if you, you have to keep aware of how much mass uh, the rover is currently a station. It'll become a rover and it'll show us the weight of it when we disconnect it from the station. But uh, a rover, right, has to account, uh, rovers and Starship have to account for both volume and mass. But more important than volume, they have to account for mass because they are mobile. They need to move, right? So volume is your capacity to store things but mass will limit your movement uh, so that's very important to keep in mind stations don't really care about mass right they care about volume because if you run out of volume then you cannot store anything else uh, but you are uh, sta uh, stations are useful because they are st stations but stationary they don't move so they can hold all the heavy materials and then you, you 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 move the lighter ones you move either ingots or components around or hydrogen you don't move the ice you don't move the stone you don't move the platinum uh, or uh, i or uh, you move the ingot so that's why we have this refinery uh, installed in the large grid rover so that the large grid rover is able to uh, harvest the ore on, on the spot refine it to ingots and then move uh, or at least uh, it's refining as it drills and once it decides to start moving it has processed as most of the ore as possible uh, and keeps refining as it goes so it reduces its weight as it starts moving until it only has ingots so yeah that's pretty much it you could also let's uh, before we disconnect it let's take advantage and then say rover batteries here and let's show uh, in terminal so that we can easily see them here they are okay fully recharged in three hours but if we sell it set them to recharge okay now they're gonna be recharged in 10 minutes right so in 10 minutes all the batteries of this rover will be fully charged but also note that your station where are the the station let me hide the rover batteries from the terminal so that they don't mix up i'm gonna show the station batteries now and you can see that these will be fully depleted in 14 minutes. So in 10 minutes, the ones in the rover will stop draining power from these ones. Uh, so they won't ever reach fully depleted because they'll still have four minutes of draining power. Uh, at that, at which point the rover battery stop draining, uh, meaning that these ones will start recharging at four minutes. So you can just sub subtract the minutes and you'll know. Uh, so that way I know that the station will still have power and uh, it'll remain with the two uh, propellers, wind turbines, so it won't be a, an issue. Actually, even better, before I leave with my rover, uh, I am going to get rid of the turbines and leave power, leave the station powered and... Um, and the batteries charge that says like will run out in weeks time because uh, I can leave the station totally stealth completely hidden no one is gonna see 
because the only thing giving away the position are these rotating wind turbines and if the batteries are fully charged right and I'm not grinding refining or or operating drills or operating assemblers then why do I need the wind turbines at the surface I get rid of them when I'm done with them and then store them the the I, I and then when we get there I'm gonna show you guys how to optimize your station and your rovers power supply because I, I, I could have shown you a ton of uh, techniques and things that put together the rover but I was just gonna confuse you and put too many topics in one single video I just wanted to get a uh, show you that at this stage once you have your iron what you want to do is build a large grid rover that allows you to establish more mobile bases uh, and also is gonna be the tool that we use to dig out our silo our rocket silo because we're gonna need more uh, radius drill radius and we're gonna use a bunch of pistons to have this rover dig out a hole massive hole in the ground for us and the refineries are gonna be processing the ore extracting the the extra so that it doesn't clog and then just building a silo in one day in less um, so that's coming up next don't uh, I'm, I'm gonna cut now because I'm gonna wait until the batteries are fully charged and then I'm gonna show you that before finishing this video but if you like this video don't forget to like uh, subscribe hit the notification bell so that you see every time we post uh, and it's just gonna be a few more minutes uh, kind of like seven minutes so I'm not gonna have you wait for that but we'll be back when uh, the batteries have transferred the power to the rover and we're ready to disconnect. All right, guys, our batteries are fully recharged. And with that, we want to select the group, rover batteries, and set them to auto. Uh, this uh, will cost won't cost them to drain batteries to recharge the others there's a meteor storm hopefully it doesn't hit our new rover uh, we can hide the batteries now uh, next okay let's go outside and see if we got any damage nope nope looks like we avoided it wow one game very close I think that one was already there before we even started building, so it's no problem. Looks good. I want to weld this uh, before. What I wanted to show you uh, before, after disconnecting as well. Okay, you have to select your character inventory. Remember, we transferred the inventory. And then add to production queue. And then withdraw. And that should be good. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so now is that is pretty much airtight and sealed. Okay, and next I want to disconnect uh, and show you how to operate it because remember it has a bunch of sorters, it has a, a bunch of speed modules, yield modules, and all that is consuming a ton of power. For the rover so you don't want it to uh, run out of power overnight when you're logged out especially on a public server which time elapses so you can walk over to this control panels here and you can say my refinery s for speed off my refinery y for yield off my assemblers off my ejectors off my engines off uh, let me make sure because they might have already been on but then you go to your control panel and you select them the group and you can see they were on so let's me let me toggle them off okay uh, you can toggle stockpile as well okay I'm gonna show you what stockpile is so remember let's go to my control panel and say tanks okay and then show all hidden blocks and then I'm going to have select them just so you can see them better showing terminal what I'm interested is that there is the rover tanks for hydrogen 
0% filled but there is one tank around here that has some hydrogen in it oh wow we already consumed it ah the engines the engines drained it that quickly so we're out of hydrogen but no problem then what you would do is imagine hydrogen tank has any percent of hydrogen in it you make sure it's stockpile off meaning that it's freely distributing hydrogen and then you select which tank you want to fill to transfer the hydrogen to and then you set stockpile on and it's going to drain this rover tank would then drain all the hydrogen uh, free flowing through the system until it reaches 100% fill or you turn stockpile back off right so that's the idea let's see the oxygen is 100% filled because the vent down at the bunker has been uh, inject uh, injecting oxygen into the, our tank uh, in the in the surface uh, in in the station and when that one filled it also started filling automatically the rover's oxygen tank so when we disconnect we disconnect with a full rover uh, h2 fully pressurized so let it let us um make sure this tank is not on stockpile off and what we're going to do is check our generators as well okay see control panel tanks I want to hide them from the terminal and then let's check generators our rover generators is another way that we can regulate the power because if they're on they're gonna consume a ton of power and we don't need them we don't need them if they're not powering our, 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 our processing um, ice into hydrogen right so turning all those off you can also see them red indicators all around okay like there ejectors refiners and you can always select a group and turn it on from anywhere in your rover so you don't have to uh, what I mean uh, you don't have to walk to those control panels uh, only okay now moment of truth let's disconnect it okay I'm gonna cut here and there it goes okay okay not bad not bad not bad okay it's not moving anymore <laughs> good now let's get close to it it's moving a little bit it's moving moving let it let it finish Okay, let's get rid of these blocks. And then... Let's just drop them in the inventory. Ah, uh, I see my hydrogen is low. Oh... This is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. It's gonna be really bad. Okay. This is a mission. This is a last episode, like late episode mission because we have to do it right now. I need to get ice with the little hydrogen I get, I have. I need to get ice and be able to fill my hydrogen tank uh, luckily we built the iron mine right next to our ice deposit so let me go to my GPS and say ice steps show on HUD okay over there 700 meters that way okay so I'm going to 
use my hydrogen and then oh here we are here we are right here we have ice ah, I made a big deal of it <laughs> I should have picked a better place to dig so that it wouldn't be this hole wouldn't be in the way of a rover traveling actually it's not bad it's in a corner okay let's come back here and deposit that ice okay our generators are off so they're not gonna automatically process the ice so we have to go back and we can look them as a group and they should be there toggle block on they should accept the ice hide empty and uh, control panel generator showing inventory show block in inventory and then there they are there's the generator we can actually drop the hydrogen and should process it it's also processing it and filling up your hy hydrogen tank. So if you notice that your generator it doesn't have ice and you want you're wondering where your hydrogen is, just look for your tank in your inventory screen. It should be here. If I show empty, it should be rover hydrogen rover tank H2. This one. So I would drop the hydrogen and then remove it. And there's two tanks. There's two tanks in this rover. So because this rover is meant to be able to transport one tank from one location to another. You can deposit all two, all, all bo uh, both tanks. Like you would stockpile the tanks in one base, move to another, and then have the second base stockpile the, ta the hydrogen out of these tanks and drain them and you would have effectively moved 200 hydrogen tanks but uh, you don't it, it wants to have hydrogen it because you're gonna use it for your engines whenever your uh, power is low uh, you don't have to go to a space at your station and uh, connect it to recharge you can do that definitely do that that's more efficient but if you're out on a distance trip or a voyage you can turn on the engines okay you see them turn them on and I'm show I'll look for them and I'll show you they have hydrogen they drain hydrogen from the ice that we put in and now they're outputting 64 kilowatts and uh, 126 kilowatts of power uh, you know each you have four engines so it's pretty good uh, to re re recharge the batteries, but you want to turn them on and off uh, conservatively, you know, like uh, you, whenever you need them, you turn your engines on. All right. But this is a boss. This is a boss rover. Okay. Now, just also when you're driving the rover, be wary uh, of the surface ground and how it levels because you don't want your rover bouncing around let's make sure it didn't get damaged actually it didn't get damaged nice very nice you don't want it bouncing around because it could uh, damage the bottom part of the rover and cause damage to the components if things blow up Let's get rid of uh, the, the building structure. Actually, I'll get rid of it and be right back then. All right, guys, I thought it would be cool to show you that as we were building the rover, our drill kept going. <laughs> the pistons kept pushing and they dug an uh, entire tunnel. And you could notice in the build that the ejectors from the rover kept throwing gravel out and then our refiners uh, in the rover as soon as we welded the sorters they, they activated and started processing the stone 
because the connectors in the setup we had with the conveyors uh, were transferring rock and stone all the way from this drill that kept going and was being processed by not two refiners but four well three because i removed the the yield to move uh, upward uh, up there uh, as you can see here there it is there's no yield module here but it was as easy as just grinding it away and everything just stayed in place stayed connected to each other didn't have to change anything even the engine is still there I see the batteries in the station will be fully recharged in three hours so in a normal server I would just set a timer or when you come back tomorrow remove the wind turbines and the, and the ceiling and after that your base is going to be fully um, uh, stealth it would be invisible from starships flying above so I'm going to just retract show you how to turn off the drills we can get rid of these I'm gonna okay there we go <coughs> let's get these pistons and then just set the velocity negative set it to like yeah, five it's fine Watch out, the drills are coming and they're coming fast. So don't let, don't get hit by a retracting drill. <laughs> it's, it's a funny way to die, but uh, it you know it, you don't want it to happen in space with your fancy drill and your things flying off to space. It's very annoying. I'll, eventually, when we're in space, I'm gonna show you how to go after your drills and stuff. Oh no! Oh no! Well, crossing fingers, it doesn't hit the rover, Meteor Storm inbound. Also, next is turn off, uh, lock your rotor. And yeah, at this point, we can get rid of the pistons and everything. Uh, and we'll be left with... Oh no, I hear bam, blowing up. Let's go, let's go rush to the surface. Let's see what's going up in the surface. Ah, now nah, they're going sideways. Th that's the importance of building in a canyon, guys. Because the sh the walls of the canyons, uh, well, the meteors always fall diagonally, and the walls of the canyons protect it. They take the they take a beating for it. For example, look, this is a crater. This is a meteor crater that would have likely impacted uh, my base if I would have built it here and there wasn't a canyon. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it looks like a boss. So we gotta start moving. We gotta get moving. The, these meter storms are not gonna be friendly. Oh, this is from when it crashed. Right, okay. Uh, so yeah, I I'm going to leave the base and show you how to move the rover. Let's start moving it. Okay, something I didn't show you. I'm gonna change the camera. Something I didn't show you is that I parked it when the rover was a station before i cut it from the umbilical cord okay uh, it was a station so it wasn't parked the wheels would fr freely move now uh it is in park and i am trying to corner in the direction of the the canyon and i'm taking my time here i'm not in a rush so i'm go even gonna retract i don't want to hit the tower and and then there's the hole and the crater so traction is not the best but there we go i think we're clear now and then yeah you just want to make sure uh, your cockpit doesn't crash into any canyon walls either so change cameras and then your uh, lcd panel at the front gives you a sense of the level i think that's one of the best things my favorite things about the entire design and then I have a speed limit on it at the beginning. Right now, our traction is trash. So we can check why is it that it's not gaining speed. There it is. Oh, I know why. Because it's so heavy. It's moving all the iron that we extracted from that mine over there. And it making it very very slow to react the inertia is uh, the momentum well it has a high mass so it's hard to slow it it takes a long time so i don't know the technical way to say it 
Okay, maybe maybe the wheels have a too much steering angle. This is why I build them in survival first. Although I like it, I like it. The steering angle in the back helps it turn. It's like get that fat ass. <laughs> Move the fat ass. <laughs> yeah, but look, she's carrying right now. Uh, two point thirty six million kilograms. That's that's a lot of mass. So yeah, here we are. We need bullets. We need ammunition. And we need ice as well. Hydrogen doesn't cost us anything. So I think are we processing any iron ingots? I iron ore? Oh no, what are you doing? What are you don't crash, don't crash. What happened? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> what happened? What happened? It clanged everywhere. 